I want to just take a moment in a quick video to give some update to the information we consider in one of our live streams. In fact, at Fish Easy, we have some live streams on Friday nights, usually around eight o'clock. And what we do is answer questions and go over the different things going on in this fish room. I hope you can join us sometime, but please subscribe and join if you wish. And it's a wonderful time to get to know good people. Now, in one of those live streams, we talked about whether or not you could use or get paramecia from your aquarium. So we did an experiment. We used the method that I have been using for many years, and it's the method of taking a little sample of something or culture of piece of a culture that's already established, using that to seed or begin new cultures, restarting the culture. Well, that is, of course, uh, uh, the way I've been doing it for some time. And I recommend that method because uh, the culture that you get is all paramecium, and it's going to be a very dense population at the end of about three weeks. So in one of our videos, what we did was we asked the question, and the question was, can you just get paramecia from your aquarium? And the answer is, using this method, it produces a good amount of paramecia that you can get from your aquarium. However, it is interesting that in our experiment, we took one bottle and we prepared the solution exactly like we did for the paramecium solution. And so in the paramecium solution, we took a bottle of water, put in some boiled seeds at the bottom, and we added some quick rise. This is the type of yeast that I use. It's the one that's really made for bread machines. But I, I like this one because it's quick dissolving. It really dissolves quickly. Just to give you an idea what it's like, the, uh, I did this this morning. And I put in the, it's white. It's very pale. And so this solution here has paramecia in it very uh, small amount to start the culture. It has yeast and a few seeds at the bottom, as you can see, not many, just uh, a number of them. And you get this uh, white mixture. The white will clear up and then the paramecia will form. And so it will take about three weeks to peak out and that will be the solution that you'll use for feeding to your small fry. However, in the experiment, what we did was we used just plain uh, aquarium water. I took out some water by siphoning around the live plants that I had. And the results were that, yes, there must have been some paramecia in this tank. And it did produce in three weeks exactly the good amount of paramecia. The only thing I could say is there is also a additional amount of other infusoria that may have been in my aquarium that has also thrived on this solution. So I'm going to take a uh, flashlight and see if I can show this to you. I'm not sure if it will show up well, but we'll take a look. Looking at the solution, what we see is in the, um, in the back of the solution, you, you see the places where there is some paramecia but also uh, there are some little creatures that are jumping around. See in the back wall, they're like little white dots that are kind of like moving up and down. That's not the paramecia. The paramecia is actually smaller than that. And uh, looking at the solution where we have, here is paramecia. You can see it, it moves a lot slower in the water column. And uh, this, this particular batch is past the peak and so it needs to be restarted and that's why I did it this morning. But you can see it's very small. It kind of moves through the water slowly. It's moving and has cilia and other little moving uh, moving particles, shall we say, moving aspects that cause little fish fry to jump at it. But in the aquarium version, we have a number of other creatures and that may not be a bad thing. It could be a good thing. I have not noticed these little quick moving creatures being something that uh, the fish can catch uh, because they are 
quite quick. I noticed, like, for example, in some of my fry tanks, I'll have, um, I will have a number of um, actual fry or these little white creatures running around in the tank. And they, they don't do any harm. And they're okay. And they don't seem to overpopulate and cause any issues. And that's the important thing. So if you, if you don't want to get a uh, particular uh, packet of uh, maybe just pure paramecia, you could try tank water instead of trying to, what a lot of people do is squeeze out a, well, a sponge filter. And so, yeah, you'll get some creatures and that kind of thing in the sponge filter. However, I don't necessarily recommend that because it makes everything brown and everything gets all over and most of it is not little small creatures. Most of it is obviously detritus or shall we say waste material that the sponge filter has absorbed. So it kind of like really makes your tank messy. But nevertheless, I know it works for some because there are some live creatures in there. Well, that's a good start. And then maybe this would be a second best up and that would be to use some tank water, grab some, um, uh, I advise grabbing some water siphoning it out from around maybe some live plants or the like. And then uh, the best option, of course, would be to actually promote what you actually have or know what's good, and that's the paramecia here in a pure form. So that's the difference. Now, in my website at, at um, aquarium.biz, you can go to the store section or the for sale of what's being sold there and go to the live food section and you'll find paramecia available and I ship it out, little small packets of, of uh, pure paramecia that you can use for your uh, tanks. But what's important is to follow the instructions. So the instructions are going to be in the link of this video. You can find the video that I use for giving instructions to people to set up once they get their paramecia. It's a really simple method and you can use this same method with your tank water. And so this is amounting to boiling a few seeds. These are uh, wheat berry seeds, or also you could consider them as uh, hard kernel wheat seed kernels. And then uh, after you've boiled them for 12 minutes, you can add three 130 second scoops. I have this really small scoop I use in here. It's uh, 130 second, very small. When you order from me, you get the you get the kit, which comes with one of these two. So you get the full the full full deal, and then you'll get some of this um, um, yeast, and you can put it together, and you can add the water, and then once you've added the water, you have to wait, and then you have to wait about two weeks. You can start feeding and using it after that period of time. It'll peak at three weeks, and so then what you do is. You start a new culture. And so if you're starting a no, new culture every 10 days, it turns out that you'll always have a complete recycle of continual process of anytime I need some paramecia, I go to the shelf and I grab one of these bottles and it's uh, one of the uh, peak, peaking out at the moment at about 21 days or three weeks, 20 days. And so it's perfect at that point to use. I can. Um, use a, I use this non-drip and that's kind of a handy dandy thing to use because this is kind of like yucky water, right? It does not have a very strong odor. It does have some odor, but it's definitely not as bad as uh, what many people have tried by using broccoli and other um, vegetables and letting it ferment and oh, it produces a really raunchy, raunchy solution, but this is quite clean. And it uh, has minimal odor and it's really nice because then I can actually use this non-drip and I will use the non-drip one and it doesn't like, well, maybe a couple of drips, but hardly does it come out like your normal baster would. And then I would just use this, squirt it in. I can squirt it into the tank, maybe a couple of shots, or I can even pour from the bottle into a, a tank if I have a, um, maybe a big batch of fry coming up and I want to seed the tank with lots of paramecia. So that's it for now. I just wanted to have this quick video. It's a follow-up, an update to one of the discussions we had on our Friday night live discussions. And I do appreciate all that do join us. If you're interested in um, tips and tricks for your fish room, please be sure to join us on a Friday night. If you missed those, 
you can't go and come on Friday night, you can't join us, that's no problem. All of the live streams are there. You just go to the live sec stream section of this channel and you can watch the replay. And if you do want to replay, please go ahead and leave a comment. I will respond to all comments that have been made, questions that are brought up, and we can also do it at our live stream on at live. So thank you so much, and I do appreciate everybody taking a moment of their precious time to uh, just watch something, a little update on something that might be of interest to you. And then, of course, this is just one trick of the little mini that we have in this fish room. Okay, have a great weekend. Have a good time with your fish, and most of all, keep it real.